Okay, let's look at uh, a few different pressure switches and how they're put together and what can be the problems with them. Pressure switches are diaphragm switches. This one here is a fairly good sized diaphragm in it. Very thin membrane in this diaphragm. If you look close, you can see this one's torn. Uh, these cannot be subjected to very high pressures. Uh, most of these run maybe 20th of a pound. We measure it in inches of water column. 28 inches of water column equals 1 psi. So these are very small. These may be 0 0.5, 0 0.8, maybe a little up higher than 1 inch of water column very small pressures. Here's one that's a little bit different. Uh, it's made out of plastic instead of metal and, but it has pretty much the same type of diaphragm. Very thin. Now this one, this one has a little something extra in it. You'll see this in a lot of these. This is designed to eliminate the pulsing that comes from the inducer. This should not be removed. And if you remove it, it tends to lower the life and maybe make this thing uh, erratic. So this should always be left in there. Uh, of course, if it's plugged or something, it would have to be cleaned. This is uh, another pressure switch. Pretty much looks the same uh, with some of the tubing on it. Uh, and this would be one of the tools you could use to measure the inches of water column. This one here is, in, this is a magnahelic in inches of water, goes up to two inches of water column. Fairly accurate, a little bit delicate. Uh, anymore, probably not the best product to use out there. Uh, electronic uh, water gauge meters are out there that are somewhat superior and they'll have a greater range than this. You have to buy these Magna Helix uh, for a very small range for different pressures. But these will do the job. You can tee these into the line for the pressure switch and you can find out if the pressure is as it should be. Now, pressures that they run at. This one here is upside down. If you look at this, it says collector box, and then it gives you a range of pressures. 1.6 to 1.8. Uh, in, in other words, it has to make between those pressures. Any other pressure uh, lower than that, it will not make. Here's another one. This one gives you 0.8 one inches water column. Some of these have numbers on them like that. Some of them are like this one. And they don't give you any numbers. They give you lots of stuff, but they don't give you numbers. You're going to have to end up going to the factory for this one or a dealer uh, to find out what the pressure should be. Now, on the back side of these, they have an adjustment for pressure. It's been painted off or blanked off with something, these are not to be adjusted in the field. If the pressure switch does not make, then you need to find out why. Don't just replace the pressure switch, don't just adjust the pressure switch. Many manufacturers will void the warranty if you adjust their pressure switches. These are almost exclusively OEM parts, and there's good reason for it. Because if these, if you do not have these pressures that come for this appliance, then the appliance is not lighting off safely. So general replacement pressure switches, no. Uh, adjusting pressure switches, no. You need to find out what the problem is. Now these are blamed for an awful lot of failures. Uh, first thing people do, pressure switch doesn't make, so they change out the pressure switch. Probably the pressure switch is telling you there's a problem somewhere in the system. 
you need to find out what the pressure is on the system and that where this thing comes in where you actually check the pressure. You could have a blocked vent, you could have a broken heat exchanger, uh, blocked air intake, all kinds of things that the pressure switch is designed to shut down the furnace in case uh, the problem exists. Occasionally these hoses on these things, if they happen to go down like that, they'll get water in them. Uh, and that needs to be cleared. If they get water inside the pressure switch, it ruins the pressure switch and it can't be used again. So that's pretty much pressure switches. Uh, they are gauges of how the system is operating. They're telling you if there's problems, they're an overseer, and they will not let the uh, appliance start unless the conditions are right. Make sure the conditions are right. Make sure you have found why the pressure switch is not working. If the pressure switch itself is at fault, that's fine. However, make sure something else has not caused it to fail. And that's pressure switches.